Here is a problem involving maximum or minimum and we will use completing the squares method to answer this question. Question number 12 is rectangular field is to be enclosed with 600 meter fencing. What dimensions will produce a maximum area? So to solve such problems first thing is we should make a rough sketch. So that's the rectangular field. OH is to be fenced, that means outside boundary. So let length and width of this be L and W. Now when we say that a rectangular field is to be enclosed with 600 meter fencing, that means all this distance around is 600 meters for us to fence. What dimensions will produce a maximum area? So there could be different combinations of length and width, right? So it could be like this, it could be like this, right? Where again, it could be 600 meters. But you know, these two figures have different area. So what should be the real shape, rather? What should be the combination of length and width, which will give us maximum area, but the perimeter remaining same, that is 600 meters. So this is the question before us. To solve such problems, let's define our variables and then start solving it. Now it says the rectangular field is to be enclosed with 600 meter fencing. That means we are talking about perimeter, which is a relation between length and width. So we can say perimeter P is equal to 2 times length plus width in a rectangle, correct? And here in our diagram, we have already shown what the variables are. The variables are we should write that first. Say let the length be L and width be W of the field. So we have defined our variables and then we write down our equation which is perimeter equals to 2 times length plus width. Now, from here, what we can do is, we can kind of simplify it. We know what perimeter is, which is 600. So, we say 600 equals to 2 times length plus width. We can divide by 2 and get 300 equals to length plus width. So, we got a relation between length and width here. Now, what does it want? What dimensions will produce a maximum area? So, area is what? Area is equals to length times width, right? So if we multiply them, we get the area. So you see, we have two variables. Now, solving for two variables is kind of difficult, so it's better to write one variable in terms of another. So let's write down width in terms of length. So from here, we can say 300 minus length is equal to width. We'll give it a number to this statement, rather equation. And our equation, 300 minus L is width, is our equation number 1. In a way, it relates width with length. Now, what dimensions will produce maximum area? What is the area? So, we say area is equals to length times width. Now, here, area is length times width, and we know width is 300 minus L. So we can rewrite this equation as L times, instead of W, we'll write 300 minus W. 300 minus L. So with that, we have area in terms of length. So we can write this as a function, area in terms of length, right, is equals to 3 times, 300 times L minus L square. So we'll open this bracket. So we can write down this as minus L square plus 300 L. It is always better to write whenever you have a equation with variables the term with highest degree first and that is why I wrote minus L square first and then 300 L. Okay. So we have area now in terms of one variable which is length. Now it becomes easy for us to solve the question. Question is, what dimensions will produce a maximum area? 
To find maximum or minimum, we need to find the vertex. As you see, this is a quadratic equation with negative leading coefficient. That means that our graph for this function is going to be something like this, right? Let me make it on the side here. And at this vertex, we can get maximum area, right, for a particular length. So, we will do the method of completing the squares to get the answer from here. Now, completing the square steps are that we have to do half of this and add and subtract. So, let me write it down here. So, length, area in terms of length is equals to, let me factor out minus outside. So if I factor minus outside, I get L square minus 300 L. Look at the steps being followed. It is L square minus 300 L. Half of this is 150. So we'll add and subtract 150 square. Correct? That doesn't change our equation. We are adding and subtracting the same thing. But it helps us to complete the squares. As you can see, the first three terms are perfect squares. We can write this as L minus from here 150 whole square, right? Minus 150 square, right? Let me write 150 square at present. Now, this is a critical step here. If you expand this, you get L square, which is here, minus 2 times 150 times L, which is minus 300, and 150 square, which is there. So, these three terms can be written as L minus 150 whole square. Now, that represents a parabola, whose vertex is from here at L equals to 150. Do you see that? So, we see from here that at L equals to 150, we have a vertex, a turning point. So, this point which we are talking about is at L equals to 150. So, at L equals to 150, we have a maximum. Is that okay? Therefore, the area is maximum if length is 150. Do you see that? We don't even have to calculate all those things. We get the answer right there. Do you see that? The question is, what dimensions will produce the maximum area? When we say dimensions, we need to give both length and width. So we know length is 150. What is the width? So we can go back to equation number 1 and find the width. So width is equals to 300 minus length, which is 150 and we get that also as 150 and therefore now we can write our answer and that is that the dimensions are units are meters don't forget the units right 150 meters times 150 meters that means 150 meters is the length and 150 meters is the width and that gives you the maximum area and of course, when you do it, it will be 150 square, right? When you open this bracket, this minus will make it plus. So you are getting positive area, right? So don't be confused with that. That minus and this minus will make it positive. So that is the maximum area which you are going to get. And the dimensions are 150 and 150. So it will be more like a square shown here, right? So 150 by 150 meters will give you maximum area. And that is how such problems can be solved. I hope you understand and appreciate the steps which we have followed and the minimum calculations which we have done to solve it. Right? That is, however, alternate way of doing it. So this is, I'll show from here. At this stage, we could use factoring and get the answer. See, if I factor out minus L, what do I get? I get minus L and here L minus 300, right? So that means, that means that our parabola is going down as shown here and it has two x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are at L equals to 0. So I'll show you, this is, I love this method. 
Therefore, I am taking it up with you. So, L at 0 and L at 300. So, at these two points, we have x intercepts. Parabola, you know, is symmetric about the vertex. So, this axis of symmetry should be where? This axis of symmetry should be midway, correct? So, axis of symmetry will be at 300 plus 0 divided by 2. And that gives you the answer, which is 150. Do you see that? So, you could have got L, the length, which will give you maximum area right there by factory without even going through completing the squares. So, that is an alternate method. Make a note of this method. If it was not specified that solve it using completing the squares, I would have done it this way and got the answer in much lesser steps. Do you see? That's the beauty of this method. I hope you appreciate it. Thank you and all the best.